At 0123 on April 26, 1986, the reactor of Power Block 4 of Chernobyl NPP is destroyed following a series of thermal explosions. The resulting radioactive cloud moves across the European part of the USSR, Eastern Europe, and Scandinavia. Stalker Call of Pripyat is the final game in the Stalker series, released in 2009 once again for Microsoft Windows exclusively. Score one for the Master Race. Taking place in the eponymous Pripyat, you take control of a soldier named Alexander, heading into the radioactive wasteland referred to as the Zone, to investigate a series of crashed helicopters that went down shortly after the event in Shadow of Chernobyl. You align yourself once again with different factions as you avoid anomalies, bandits and mutants in a search for answers which will span 3 or so different areas and a 10 to 15 or so hour single player campaign. So let's turn off our crosshairs, crank it up to master difficulty and get lost in the zone again, shall we? I have a bad feeling about this. Now this is a game that feels like a return to form compared to the abomination that was Clear Sky. Combat has been replaced largely with exploration compared to Clear Sky where you're almost constantly shooting at something. In Call of Pripyat, combat and fighting is often limited to missions themselves. You'll still be shooting a fair share of cheeky breakies, don't get me wrong, but there's much greater focus on moving around the environment, uncovering artifacts and interacting with characters than there is returning fire with balaclava wearing bandits. Initially you're just recovering data from the downed choppers to figure out what happened and as you complete these objectives, you run into other NPCs who all have their own subplots and little side missions they can offer you. Maps are cluttered with markers now, making it much easier to find where you are and where you need to go at all times. There's a series of neutral zones where you can buy or sell your gear and talk to NPCs who, as I said, are all too happy to hand out extra missions. About two thirds into the campaign, you get to create your own squad to help you reach Pripyat itself and this is probably one of the best sequences in the entire series, as you and your new buddies move through a highly radiated series of tunnels, avoiding mutants and the military. Visually Call of Pripyat seems to have taken something of a step back from the previous games. The lighting is still very impressive, but the environments lack any real detail or landmarks. Areas are mostly just large craters with these unscalable hills to keep you from going too far off the beaten path. The draw distance is pretty impressive, but the level of detailed distance is extremely short. Now what this means is that as you're walking about, you're going to see grass growing right before your eyes. And it's a bit of a shame for a 2009 PC exclusive to suffer from something like this. The texture detail again is incredible and the sound design is really immersive and unsettling. When you're moving about at night time, it's common to hear the lamented howls and shrieks of nearby mutants and it's creepy stuff. Most of the time though, this is a decent enough looking and sounding game and I had a steady frame rate pretty much the entire time with brisk loading screens. The main thing that Call of Pripyat does though is recapture that feeling of just being thrown into this large living and breathing world. One thing I've always loved about this series is the way you can find yourself literally in the middle of nowhere and still run into an NPC that's all too happy to trade items with you, to chat, or just give you some random job. Getting lost in the world and helping out different factions and groups is where the real enjoyment comes from, more so than the actual campaign, which can be finished in mere hours if you don't stop to check out the scenery. The story in these games has always been a little bit weak, only because it always seems to revolve around scientific mumbo jumbo and stuff about paramilitary groups and all this other obscure crap. Fine, screw him. Something as simple as coming up to a campfire in the middle of the night and seeing a bunch of guys just sitting around shooting the shit is way more memorable and realistic than anything on offer in the main storyline. How the hell? I'd say on the whole, Call of Pripyat is probably the smallest game out of the entire trilogy. There's only three main areas in the entire game, whereas I think the other games had close to a dozen each. Also like the others, Call of Pripyat is a game with a lot of half-baked ideas. You know, some work well, others do not. The whole central theme of the entire series is around the radiation in the zone and all the weird anomalies the player has to avoid or interact with. In Call of Pripyat, they've made this a bit more extensive. For instance, now there's a chance seemingly out of the blue where a larger mission might occur which is extremely dangerous and requires you to find cover before it takes place. Now this sounds cool on paper, but all you end up doing is standing in a preset building or covered area for like two or three minutes until it passes. Yeah, I timed it. It has to be specific buildings too. I mean, I guess certain ones weren't built with the right type of radioactive resistant concrete or something. 
It seems the mutants are now much more of a threat than they used to be as well. Even the basic mutated dogs or wolves can kill you in a couple of hits. That's not even mentioning the other more dangerous types that throw barrels and other random pieces of shit at you in between surviving a hundred assault rifle rounds to the face. I'm still not fond of the way you retrieve artifacts by just walking gun ho into the middle of a goddamn anomaly that will tear you to pieces 90% of the time. It's just not enjoyable. The stamina system is back and it's somehow worse than it was in the previous games. Now you can only run for about 10 seconds before you gotta stop to catch your breath. And again, I just hate this kind of mechanic because it just really slows down the pace of the game. Also, sadly, yet again, when you're starting out with a new playthrough, the game is often crushingly difficult because you're just not equipped that well. This time, though, they're nice enough to give you an AK and a fair bit of ammo, but you've got some really crappy armor and not many healing items, so it's still pretty tough until you get your hands on some more gear. Enemies have a tendency to still turn sawn-off shotguns into sniper rifles, and even later in the game, you'll suffer a couple of instant kills when enemies get a lucky shot off, but the shooting seems to be way more sensible here than it was with Clear Sky. You'll still be mashing that F5 button like it's going out of style, but would it really be a stalker game if you weren't hammering that quick save button every five seconds? But look, I don't want to be a negative Nelly, so let me talk about the things that do work, of which there are many. The upgrade system is back, but now it's considerably cheaper to upgrade your gear. You need to collect certain tools in the game to access the next tree of upgrades, but they actually have a noticeable effect on your character overall, especially with the weapons. A fully upgraded scoped rifle is now a force to be reckoned with, and even just upgrading the weapons to their most basic levels can have a huge improvement on the combat. Armor is now split up between head and torso, and you can upgrade these pieces separately as well, giving your helmet night vision, for instance, or, you know, increasing your resistance to radiation or electricity for your torso. I gotta say though, I'm a little bit disappointed that there's not really any new weapons. They're mostly just the same weapons from the first two games brought back yet again. Not that this is really that much of an issue and even the standard AK with a few upgrades can get the job done, but some variety would have been great. You can also map certain items to the F1 to F4 keys, which makes it so much easier to heal yourself in combat or use radiation medicine in a pinch. You now only need one bandage to stop bleeding, thank god, and they're in total abundance once again, as they should be. They've also brought back the hunger system, which requires you to do little more than just eat the odd sausage or bread roll when an icon shows up on the screen, but I like that they've added it back in. And lastly, I just like the fact that this is just a fun game to waste time with. The Stalker series has always had this misplaced reputation for being a bunch of hardcore survival games or something like that, but they're really not. It's just a series of games where you can explore a creepy wasteland, getting into fights, or just checking out all the different areas to see what you can find. And I think that's why the Stalker series is so hit and miss. If you want to play a game with a forgiving health system, gunplay that takes all the five minutes to get the hang of, or heavily scripted characters that ramble on in cinematics, then this isn't the game for you. Running into a group of enemies spraying your weapon like you would in a game like Far Cry, for instance, will end as quickly as it begun. These are games about taking your time, gradually improving your arsenal, and getting engrossed in this dynamic environment that can often change at a whim. That's not to say Call of Pripyat is perfect, I did encounter my fair share of bugs, though they were far less abundant than the other games, which is a damn good thing. If I had to pick a favourite game out of all three, I'd have to go with Shadow of Chernobyl. It's still the only game in the series I can happily play unmodded, and most of the set pieces and interactions with other characters I think are the most memorable. However, I don't consider the Stalker games to be a must-play franchise compared to some of the others in the genre, but it still can be a great game for players who have a lot of patience, can appreciate subtle storytelling, and can also put up with unforeseeable errors and bugs. Stalker is an acquired taste, like a fine Stilton, Vegemite on toast, or I don't know, Kanye West. And there's no arguments that the people who do find themselves ultimately invested in this franchise will get a lot out of it. Now, get out of here, stalker.